How are you everyone? My name is Mr. J.M. Kimani, a lecturer in management accounting. I welcome you to topic four, cost accumulation. Lesson one. Now in cost uh, accumulation, we are going to focus on the elements of cost, uh, such as the material, the labor, and the overheads. In our previous topic, cost uh, classification, we actually look at uh, the how cost can be classified into elements of cost. And actually, we covered these types of cost. So this time, you're going to look at one type of cost after the other. Now, cost of producing a product or providing a service must be ascertained or determined for product costing and control purposes. These costs comprise of material cost, labor cost, overhead cost. Therefore, cost accumulation covers Roman 1, material costing, Roman 2, labor costing, Roman 3, overheads. Now, when come to material costing, this entails the study of analysis of purchases or purchasing procedures, stock control, valuation of stocks, and allocation of material cost to products. It's a whole process right from when you uh, start the process of buying materials to when you are going to allocate these materials uh, to the products. Then labor costing, this entails analysis such as calculation of labor, remuneration, recording of labor hours, introduction of incentives, reduction of labor related cost, and allocation of labor cost to products. Again, is an entire process starting from how we can uh, determine or we can collect data concerning the laborers, for example, the labor hours, and um, also the units produced by these laborers, if the basis of paying them would be units uh, produced or the time uh, they have uh, worked. At the same time, the incentives that you are going to give the laborers and other labor-related costs, such as frauds and uh, I I involved, then finally, we have uh, the allocation of these labor uh, costs to the products. Then the overheads, these uh, costs cannot be identified with a specific unit or service. These costs are incurred for a number of units. The study entails allocation of overheads to products, which is true that we covered this previously, that overheads are indirect cost, which may not be identified with a specific product or actually uh, a service. So therefore, we are going to look at how we can allocate these overheads, even though they are indirect cost. We allocate them to the products. That will be our uh, objective. So therefore, those are just um, a brief uh, analysis of these three elements of cost, material cost, labor cost, and um, overheads. So we begin with the first one, material costing. Material costing. So we are going to look at what this entails, material costing. What does it entail? The procedures and all that until we get uh, the cost that we are going to allocate to the products. Now, inventories or stocks consist of raw materials, work in progress, finished goods, and consumables such as spare parts and stationaries. Material costing, therefore, entails the study of the inventory control system of a stock item which generally experience similar problems and therefore consideration 
will generally apply to all forms of inventory irrespective of their nature. So we can talk of uh, different types of inventories. We talk of raw materials. We talk of the work in progress, which are uh, materials that have been processed, but not to the final uh, stage. We have the finished products, and we have the consumables, like uh, the stationaries. So we are going to look at uh, if they behave the same way, having the same characteristics. So we want to see the procedures that are uh, entailed uh, in this process. Material costing will cover purchasing procedures, receipts and storage, issue of inventory and control. Now, starting with the first one, purchasing procedures. So, number A, purchasing procedures. So, how do we buy the materials uh, and we bring materials to the company, especially to the stores. Inventories form a large proportion of the organization's costs. Therefore, purchasing function is important for cost control. The procedures for acquiring inventory will vary from a firm to another. However, the general procedures may comprise of the following. Now, we are saying that we need to give uh, a lot of attributes and respect to the uh, stocks or the inventories because they involve a huge junk of money. And therefore, we are going to give it uh, enough consideration. And we can have normally the following procedures. Now, first of all, you say that um, it is not simple, not um, maybe we can have uniform system of buying or purchasing in all companies. Every company may be having their own customized uh, procedures, but we can have general procedures of purchasing uh, the, uh, these uh, materials. Now, we can have the following as the procedures, namely preparation or namely preparing purchase requisitions, Roman 2, search for suppliers, Roman 3, request for tenders, Roman 4, suppliers selection, Roman 5, preparation of purchase orders, Roman 6, order follow-up procedures, Roman 7, receipt of goods in the stores. Those are just few but also important procedures. Of course, uh, it depends with the size of the company and even the type of material that uh, we are buying. We can have somehow complicated system of uh, buying or we can have a very simple system of purchasing. But let's just uh, talk around, uh, within this uh, area that I've provided. Now, when talk of the first one, which is uh, preparation or preparing purchase requisition, this starts with identifying the need to purchase. This is where stock levels reach the critical limits. The purchase requisition is made by storekeeper specifying the type of stocks, quantity, quality, etc. Purchase requisition is then forwarded to the purchasing department. Now, when talk of the purchase or preparation of, this is preparation, preparation of uh, requ requisitions, requisitions. Now, we can either have the requisitions done by the stores department or we can have them being done by the user departments. For example, like the production department may give the request either to the stores directly or either to other, any other uh, uh, form or forum so that we can be, they can tell us what they would require. But specifically, when we are talking of uh, purchasing procedures, especially uh, in this area of materials, we normally assume it is about the stores. 
So we are talking of the stores is the one that knows how much of the store is how much of the stock is remaining in the store, and therefore they, it's the time they to need to uh, to replace. That's why we talk about the critical limits. So should uh, the materials in the store reach that limit? that we should actually make a requisition, then the store is going to prepare these uh, requisitions and now present these to the purchasing department for them to proceed with the process. And that's why Roman 2, I gave search for suppliers. The purchasing department mainly have suppliers catalog indicating, indicating um, the names of um, the names of suppliers or suppliers who are able to supply if stocks are new then suppliers information is not available in the catalog or in our data and therefore the purchasing department will have to search for new suppliers maybe from sources like directory now we are saying that um, we are going to to uh, look for suppliers this is now roman 2 this is search for suppliers. Now, talk of search for suppliers. It is where we prepare. Uh, we want to, to, to actually um, prepare tenders, and we can have the suppliers actually tendering. So we are saying that um, we can either have data of previous suppliers who have been supplying us, or we can have no such data because maybe it's the first time we are, we are buying and therefore we can have other forms of getting uh, the proper suppliers who will supply us with the materials we want. So all in all, they are the ways of looking for suppliers and uh, determining who supplies what and especially getting their catalog and uh, their price list and all that uh, so that we can be able to know whether we can give or we can rely on these suppliers, or we can engage them. That's the position. Then Roman 3 is that um, request for tenders. So you can have here Roman 3, which is request for tenders. Now, this is where we ourselves, we actually prepare the tenders, uh, the tender forms. Then we ask the suppliers uh, to buy the tender forms then they feel so that we can, they can give us, so that now we can be able to, to look at who is the um, appropriate supplier for what material. So that means they, we would going to request them to fill in the tender forms and they submit this to us so that we can be able to vet them. And that is actually our Roman 4, which is selection of suppliers. Roman 4 is selection, selection of suppliers. So this is where we vet, we vet the uh, tenderers or we vet the suppliers so that we can be able to know which supplier is going to supply us for what or we are going to give order. Remember, we have not given orders to the suppliers. We are just narrowing down the list of suppliers so that we can know uh, who can we give uh, uh, this order and then we can have the process continuing. So first of all, vetting of suppliers is uh, a very important stage so that we can be able to tell uh, those suppliers that we think from the information that we have and what they have given us as they are filling in the tender forms that uh, we can rely on uh, these suppliers uh, for whatever uh, units or materials we are buying. Then five, preparation of purchase order. Number five is preparation. Preparation of um, purchase orders. Now, this is where we prepare the LPOs, the local purchase orders. So, the LPOs, where we are going to state what we want and what we require from a particular supplier and concerning what material. So, it is us who are going to prepare what we require from these uh, suppliers after selecting the suppliers and vetting them. So we put um, into rate, uh, written what we require and in what proportion, in what quantity, and uh, therefore we can uh, be able to have the process starting. And for uh, by floating, by giving these orders, it's like saying we are offering, and then the, the acceptance may be them, maybe accepting at the uh, prices they quote, or else we can either do the acceptance when they give us the price list or the quotation. 
So we agree this would be the price. But all in all, like I said, we are just giving just um, hypothetically some of the procedures. Otherwise, there are some procedures that are, if we are doing procurement, then you would require to know those needed uh, and the details concerning uh, the procedures uh, for purchasing. But we are just giving those uh, important ones and especially concerning this study. Thank <music> you.